Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 51st T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. Last time it was the Santa Fe Institute workshop on what is biological computation, with my answer being it's life is defining computation, is defining meaning, is defining life in a circle. Uh, and it was about stickers. We sent out our 2019 commemorative Hardware Land T2 Tile Project stickers uh, to fans around the world. We've had reports from California and Spain that people have got them. So so that's fun. Uh, uh, in this last week, I was supposed to be working on cache update protocol stuff for true inner tile instead of just loop back on the tiles. Instead, I worked on uh, the the locking system, which is connected to the cache updates, and it was something that was sort of sink in my mind. It would be cool if I could do this. It would be better. It would be faster, and it, it would be more in its own way, more in the T2 way. Uh, so I went ahead and, and did it. So I want to talk about that a little bit. But there's also some new hardware. This this a uh, new BeagleBone, the BeagleBone AI that was announced last week. I want to talk about that. Uh, a bit as well. Um, and then this week I want to get this uh, uh, lock state machine redesign settled, as at least as settled enough to, to, to try it out seriously and to f start figuring out the corner cases a little better and then try to get back to caching. Next week is going to be the 52nd episode. I mean, that's like a year. That's a year. We're going to do anything special about it specifically. I don't know. We'll find out. Come back next week. All right. So, yeah. Uh, um, so we've been, we were building these power frame, uh, with these, uh, struts, uh, basic struts that had a, uh, a piece with a, positive and a negative a male and a female on it uh, as I've gotten more experience with them w in particular with 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 these parts of the connectors uh, uh, that made up with these guys over here I have started to see some issues with them I don't know if you can really tell uh, but one of the uh, one of the the tines the little ladder hooks busted off on this one uh, on this one, actually, uh, a m big chunk of the whole uh, upper latch came off. And another thing that ha happens fairly often is sometimes the uh, the clearances are, are tight enough that it, it's really quite hard to get these things to settle. So for all these things, I wanted to do a little bit of a redesign, so I did some of that uh, this week. It was just uh, basically I, I got rid of one tooth. Whoops. Uh, um, and so this is what the original one looked like with the four ribs. Uh, uh, I made a three rib one that, and, uh, oh, oh yeah. And also, uh, added a couple extra layers, uh, of plastic, uh, um, on the, the tongue, the, the thin part that tends to come out. And, uh, they, these, these work pretty good now. So they, they come apart cleaner. They're a little bit looser, uh, which is good. I haven't, I, I've done a few of these things and I haven't had any of them not mate properly. And they, and so maybe they're a little bit weaker. I don't know, but I think, I think overall this is the way to go. So I'm going to be switching over to them. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, so that's the, uh, power zone. Yes. Uh, uh, the people at BeagleBoard.org, along with uh, Texas Instruments and so forth, have come out with a new version of the BeagleBone, the BeagleBone AI, learning AI in the palm of your hand. And uh, it was announced last week. The people have been talking about it coming on the on the uh, forums and so forth for a while. And you know, there's a lot to like about the BeagleBone AI. Uh, uh, it's got a gigabyte of memory. It's got a 16 gigabyte flash drive and integrated on the board so you don't have to have an SD card. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, um, and and the uh, TI, the new AM5729, or new for the BeagleBone line anyway, uh, is really quite powerful. And from the point of view of the T2, uh, you know, one point of it is that it's the same shape, the same mechanical headers, you know, header mechanical and header compatibility. Uh, um, but it's got 
uh, twice as many of the programmable real-time units, the Prus, uh, that really I would love to have. Uh, the BeagleBone greens that we're using have two uh, Pru cores on them, and so I'm having to divide them up. Each Pru core is handling three inner tile connections, uh, three each, three each, and then they all have to uh, take their own time to send the bytes off to Linux once packets arrive and are, are being pulled back and forth. The uh, BeagleBone AI has four Pru units, so we could cut down the duty cycle. We could have each Pru just taking care of two directions, and I have a fourth Pru left over to just be doing the management of, of data going back and forth. It could be a whole lot faster. Uh, uh, you know, really, what it, this the BeagleBone AI about is about these embedded vision engine ease, these various accelerators that are designed for deep learning kind of stuff, so that you can do like uh, you know real time frame rate, vi uh, you know video analysis and recognize. Uh, water bottles and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, we wouldn't be using any of that, at least not anytime soon. And these things are 125 bucks or something to get started, uh, but they are pretty nice and they would fit in the same hole as the Beagle Bone Green. So I had to uh, order one. Uh, here's what it looks like. Uh, there's the box uh, inside the box. Oh, it's, it's even got an antenna because it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, in addition to gigabit Ethernet and 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 so forth. So there's its little quick start guide. It's got a big old heat sink on the uh, CPU, and it's got an extra memory on the back to get to one gig. Uh, uh, this thing is pretty well stuffed. It's USB-C powered. Uh, um, and you know you can tie it to a PC. You can just plug in a keyboard and mouse with a micro HDMI connector. That's what I tried to do. And uh, I, I got it powered up. I plugged in a micro HDMI to DVI connector and plugged it into a monitor. Couldn't get the monitor to light up. <sighs> So not quite the out-of-box experience that one might have hoped for. On the other hand, uh, it was easy enough to get into it with a uh, uh, e Ethernet cable, which I have lying all over here to talk to the BeagleBone Greens. And so I got into the uh, BeagleBone AI without much trouble. And so I do what I always do, which is, you know, become root. <sighs> You know, it's funny. We trust you've received the usual luxury of usually well, respect the privacy. So the first time you invoke, you know, super user power, root power uh, uh, in Debian, it prints this little thing out, which is at, at, at this point, it's it's almost quaint, you know, thinking, you know, <laughs> this little thing that you're going to buy zillions of. And it's, it's talking to you as if you're, uh, you know, administering a mainframe. Respect the privacy of others. Think before you type with great power comes great responsibility okay yeah it only does it the first time yeah um step one of course install emacs uh, uh and then i tried to say well you know can we build mfm can we build ulam can we run uh mfm t2 on this thing uh so installed the packages and uh cloned the repos uh, mfm and ulam and started to build <laughs> Things were going pretty fine. Build, build, not build. Uh, thermal zone, zero, critical temperature reach, 95 degrees C, shutting down. Yeah, I, I had noticed this thing was actually pretty hot. And of course, it did have that big heat sink on it. So, okay, it has a heat sink. That, that's okay. The BeagleBone Greens don't have a heat sink, at least not by default. Uh, I went and got my... <laughs> Uh, uh, my uh, infrared uh, temperature sensor. Uh, uh, this thing is, is really hot. This this is hotter than I want my steak. And that's just looking at the heat sink. I mean, who knows how hot it actually is down deep inside. 150 degrees Fahrenheit at the heat sink while this thing is running. And it's not like I'm actually doing any AI on it, you know. Uh, um, and Or 74 point something in centigrade because I'm used to centigrade grade for uh, you know CPU temperatures even though I'm not used to it or anything else because I'm still uh, uh, not very caught up to metric uh, um, but I found out how to uh, 
dump out the the temperatures 76,200 these are temperatures in units of milli celsius so it's saying 76.2 degrees centigrade uh, uh and the, in the different thermal zones and as the compilation runs yeah, 81 degrees 81 degrees 82.6 and 84 degrees and so forth you could just see it going up uh, uh and i was googling around at this point and they're like oh yeah you should definitely buy a fan well yeah okay sure uh, uh that's not good news for the idea that we could use the beaglebone ai inside the t2 tiles i mean so well look here it is uh, um let's get rid of this thing for a second uh uh all right so here's my uh uh thing and the heat sink goes all the way to the surface of the headers now in when it's mounted in the t2 tile there's just about two millimeters before above these headers to go before you get the other board the pc board itself so getting cooling in here would be quite the challenge uh, um so i figured maybe i could slow the clock down something like that <sighs> No, no, you can't. Uh, this thing, I mean, one of its features is it runs at 1.5 gigahertz, which is nice if you got speed. Uh, but in fact, the slowest it runs at is 1 gigahertz. So it was actually running at 1 gigahertz out of the box, and I couldn't turn it any slower. That was the slowest thing it had. So I needed to do something for a fan, so uh, I used the quick start guide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and actually waving it back and forth, I could get the thing da cooled down enough uh, so that I had some chance of actually building this stuff. Uh, um, yeah, and I, I started wandering through the log files, trying to see what's going on. This was from the previous thing. The log files are a little strange also. I mean, this is brand new. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to uh, dump on these guys because, you know, getting a piece of hardware out, getting a hardware software system out, really, really hard, especially because BeagleBone, the BeagleBoard.org is, is, you know, it's mostly volunteers. And, you know, so little rough edges like the fact that the system log file that shows up out of the box is over 10 megabytes. Uh, um uh, it has all this stuff in it, but there are, and there are these little scary things. Like, for example, there are like kernel oopses, uh, that happen with the, where is it? Master Eve 2 P1, you know, whatever. And, you know, for all I know, maybe this is harmless, but it's a little distressing to see. As I was looking through the log files, I see, yeah, it actually did see my, uh, monitor. Uh, what's the problem? Uh, uh P244W, that's definitely the model number of my monitor. So it saw it. So how, how come it didn't actually light up it turned out that was the connectors weren't seated far enough and these dvi connectors they're they can be very finicky it seems in my experience uh, uh and eventually i did get it to light up the monitor and got to see the beagle board dog with his tongue sticking out and so forth uh and you know there's a lot of stuff there's 600 meg 600 plus meg of ram available there's uh almost 10 gig of disk available even after you know all of the initial loads and and so forth and you can run emacs because of course that's the first thing i installed uh, uh, i use always use xis to test the display stuff got the watching the the temperatures and again it's you know 88 degrees celsius that's toasty uh, uh but and i think uh this was this was distressing i actually got internal compiler errors in the g plus plus compiler the you know it should be bulletproof i suspect that might be due to temperature i'm not sure it happened a couple of times but eventually i got the thing to build anyway so i'm not sure how that could be anything but some kind of hardware unreliability uh, uh but clearly these things the fan is not optional for the beaglebone ai uh but i got it built and I started it up and, and sure enough, uh, this was doing the diffusion limited aggregation demo, the DLA demo, cause that was the first one that compiled and I didn't want to wait anymore. Uh, um, the temperatures are almost hitting 90 degrees centigrade. Uh, um, but it, uh, aggregated it <laughs> and, and, and it actually worked. So that was pretty cool. Uh, um, you know, bottom line, is the BeagleBone AI in the future for the T2 tile or the T2.5 uh, uh, something, you know, it, it, partly I don't know. I don't, I don't know the header layouts and stuff. The assumption would be you'd probably have to end up 
uh, doing a new board spin anyway. And if it was going to be a significant enough redesign for that, then maybe there'd be a, a time to ch to just sort of go to the T3 and think about FPGAs and all kinds of other things. So the Beagle Bone AI may not be right, but it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. And I sure would love to get to redesign around having four of those coprocessor proofs instead of just the two that we have available. All right. So, but supposedly the main event is this cash update stuff in the lock state machine. I got myself so wound up trying to figure this out. I actually spent like a day plus writing a report to myself about what I was proposing to do. Uh, uh, redesign the lock state machine for faster cash updates. And, you know, I'm actually going to put this in the repo for the T2 because, you know, it, it has a lot of background information that might be useful or so forth, but at least it's a part of the record. Uh, uh, but here's the idea. Idea. So where where's for here? So this figure right here. No. Um, so if it, inner tile, the way it works is tile A decides he wants to have an event that in, would involve uh, tile B. It tries for the lock between A and B. Tile B says, okay, you can have it. Once it's got the lock, it, per, it performs the event, figures out whatever changes are necessary, sends a cache update begins, sends cache update saying this change, this change, this change, sends a cache update end packet, at which point tile B sends back a cache update act saying, I got it, I applied it. It. and at that point tile a says release the lock and tile b says the lock is freed that is a complete event and the the lock exchanges take microseconds and stuff but they're actually the relatively faster part of the interaction and what i thought of was you know if we let tile b release the lock instead of having tile A do it, even though tile the A tile A is the one that took it. So in the sense of locking, you'd assume that whoever locked the door would be the one that would unlock it, but there's no reason why it has to be that way. And then you're sort of viewing the, the locking and unlocking not really as locks so much as just rapid signals. And if we had tile B, if we had tile A take the lock, tile B free the lock, then we could get rid of the cash update ACK packet in Entirely, and we could have something more uh, uh, like we could have something like this: try for the lock, lock given, send cash update, release the lock, and we're done. And this, in my mind, is our route to one air. You know, maybe we don't need it, maybe we do, but this is why I was going for it. And so it involves a, a bunch of changes. So we've got these little graphs. These are the state machine graphs. Uh, this is the current one. Whoops, this is the, that was the current one. Uh, this is the one that we've currently bought. The stuff that's in red, these guys, is, is just getting set up. It's sitting at idle is normally where you are. And then either side might try to grab it. And it goes from take to taken. And the other side goes from idle the given and then take goes to release and back to idle and the idea was let's take release and move it over to the other side and so I uh, did that so now release is over on the given side when I started working through it it turned out that uh, we needed an intermediate state so the taken didn't go straight back to idle under certain circumstances and in particular the uh, the side that took the lock also needs to be able to free it. So that was the hole in this whole idea of mine, which of course I spent a tremendous amount of time developing the whole thing before I realized this obvious limitation. What is the obvious limitation? Well, tile A, the one that's having an event, it might need to take two locks between the, you know, northeast and northwest that they could both be involved. And it might be the case that it gets the northwest one, but then is unable to get the northeast one because northeast goes and does something else. As a result, it need now tile A needs to release the lock that it did get. But in the original improved version, the lock was being given released by the far side. The far side didn't know that the event was blown up. So now the version two inner tile state well, a lock state machine, which this is implemented, and I've been playing around with this, and it's working for the basic case, but I'm not entirely happy about how it's dealing with contested locks and so forth. Uh, um, the release procedure is the normal way that the guy who gave the lock says, okay, I applied your cash update. We are done. It goes through release. If the active side, the one that's having the event tried to get multiple locks and failed, it goes through the drop procedure and they both end up releasing the lock either way. We'll see how it works. And that's coming along. Uh, um, and that's it. So, 
Next week is the 52nd T-Tuesday update. Thanks for being here. Have a good week.